Hi, and welcome to Intro to Osteology. So this is just going to be a really quick uh, few minute video explaining some of the basic components of the skeleton and the cartilage and where it's all located, just to get you an idea of the lay of the land. Uh, so I'm Elisa and I'll be the one explaining it to you. So the human skeleton uh, is primarily cartilage at first. It's actually all cartilage in the beginning. Uh, the cartilage then over time during development ossifies into classic good old solid calcium rich bone. And, so, and what we're going to do through the rest of this presentation just to get you oriented is now talk about how cartilage interacts with bone and some of the roles it plays in the skeleton. So let's start off here um, with the different types of cartilage, and we're going to look at the hot three here. So these are highly elastic and fibrocartilage. So let's talk a little bit about each one of these types of cartilage specifically. Let's begin up here with the hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most abundant type. It's everywhere, as you'll see shortly. It's in everything from articular joints uh, to the respiratory system, actually forming components of the larynx. Um, trachea and bronchioles, some of the nose uh, in it uh, as well, uh, key components of the ribs. It's very flexible, but it's very also resilient, and it contains only and only collagen fiber, so only collagen here for hyaline. The next one is elastic, uh, so this elastic is going to be found in some of the more um, flexible regions of the body, primarily just your internal, external ear and your epiglottis. Um, and it contains elastic fibers, which give the give to elastic cartilage. And finally, we'll be looking at the, the hard worker, the strong one, a fibro cartilage. So this is very thick collagen fibers, and it's very, very strong stuff. And it sits between uh, components of bone and, and absorbs pressure. It's that big shock absorber. It also allows for flexibility between some of these uh, bones, as we'll see here, particularly um, the vertebral discs. In case you're wondering uh, where we have our lovely assisting images from, so these are from the 1918 version of Gray's Anatomy. Um, so it's free and it's available online. I think it's actually... Uh, public domain. So let's go ahead and start off here. Uh, when we're talking about the skull, we are primarily going to be looking at two types of cartilage. Uh, the first is going to be the hyaline cartilage. Just a sec, let me... Whoop, there it is. Okay, so the hyaline cartilage, which is going to comprise the cartilage of the nose. So it's going to give us that nice bridge of the nose here. Right, so it extends out, and you can almost see uh, a nose forming up here. All right, the next part is going to be that elastic cartilage, right? And so that elastic cartilage is going to give us the external component of our ears, right here, and right here. Okay, it's going to give us that shape and that flexibility. So even though we humans don't need to flex and move our ears around a lot, uh, we still have it. It's a little bit of a hangover. And we have it if we ever need it again. Next up, we're looking at um, the cartilage that we find in the rib cage, as well as the in between the vertebra of the spinal column. So uh, we look at hyaline cartilage here when we're talking about our rib cage. They actually complete and allow our ribs to meet at the sternum or the manubrium of the sternum. Right. So this is the cartilaginous component of the human rib cage right here. Um, however, when we look at the um, vertebrae themselves, we're dealing with something different. We're looking at the fibrocartilage, right? And so those are going to be those, those little shock absorption pads. Actually, they go all the way up here. Those little shock absorption pads um, that we need to help support our upright vertical... Oh, this is not quite in the... There we go. Okay vertical posture of bipedalism. They uh, suffer quite a bit of damage over time. Um, they are often the site of inflammation and they are compressed as we uh, are constantly fighting that battle with gravity. The 
tonic structure we're going to look at uh, actually is located within the thorax, uh, not, not exactly a component of the skeleton itself. However, we still use cartilage in this area. Uh, the first is going to be the hyaline cartilage that makes up uh, not only the trachea, but the bronchi and uh, the rest of the respiratory tubes that need that little bit of extra structure. There we go. If you can imagine that, looking anything like it should. Uh, also the larynx itself. Uh-huh. Uh, ooh. Yeah. I'm an artist, but imagine that's a larynx. <laughs> All right. And then... Um, so normally what we have in between those two structures is going to be a bone, the hyoid shapes right here. Um, but then finally we're going to have elastic cartilage uh, in this part here. This was representing the epiglottis, right? Okay, so this is some cartilage that we have in a non-skeletal component of the body. Next up we have the location of... Uh, cartilage in the pelvic girdle itself. In this case, we're looking at fibrocartilage. And uh, part of the reason we're looking at fibrocartilage for this particular structure is because we need to have uh, definitely some stability here in what we call the pubic symphysis. Okay, the pubic symphysis is the meeting point in the pubic arch. Um, it's required that we do have some flexibility there for a few reasons. Of course, these bones are going to be moving in each other as we're walking around, uh, shifting one way to another. But primarily, the reason that we uh, need this flexibility uh, relates to childbirth. So this part of the cartilage uh, is susceptible to hormones that are secreted during that process, and so they're able to get a little stretchy and allow a little more give for any babies uh, to be born. Next up in these long limbs, we're going to find both fibrocartilage as well as hyaline cartilage. So hyaline cartilage is definitely present on some of these articulating surfaces, but also we can find our fibrocartilage, uh, particularly here on some of these heavy uh, weight-bearing ends of bone. So here uh, you would see it articulating between the tibia, right, and the femur. And those nice paddings are just helping cover and protect the ends of the long bones as they are uh, pivoted around by the musculature. That way they don't grind on each other and we don't have overall bone loss due to that type of surface-to-surface uh, -surface grinding. Now also between our um, phalanges and metatarsals and carpal bones, we have a hyaline cartilage, which can be found between these bones at the articular surface, right? So they're adding that padding and protection so we can bend and move and flex our fingers and toes in many ways, as well as also our ankle bones and wrists. Right? So each one of those surfaces is... Oh, that's not very specific, but you, know, you get what I'm saying here. Um, along these surfaces, so as we have our and extend, use our range of motion, we're not damaging all of these closely knit bones uh, along our hands and feet. Now that we've seen where the cartilage is located in the skeleton uh, and in the body, Let's talk a little bit about how it grows. So it grows in two ways, interstitial as well as uh, appositional. So interstitial itself is talking about where uh, the new matrix is made um, from within the, the cartilage. So it, it grows within and it kind of is, is growing out, right? Um, and appositional is a little bit different. So this is talking about cartilage that is laid down layer upon layer um, as these new cells, these cartilage forming cells are secreting uh, within the existing cartilage. Now that we've talked a little bit about cartilage and where it is and what kinds are there and how it grows in the body, let's orient to you a bit more to some of the major structures of, you know, the 
parts of the skeleton that we think of when we think of a skeleton, and those are going to be the bones. Uh, first off, let's talk about the roles of bone in the body. Uh, one of the first and uh, most important roles of it is blood cell formation here, hematopoiesis. So this doesn't occur in all of the bones, but does occur in the red marrows of some of the bones. Also triglyceride or fat storage. Um, it uh, uses a, a little bit of an energy source. It's very difficult actually for the body to get to it, but it is also stored in the bone cavities. So technically it is there. Uh, the next would be mineral storage. Bones are definitely a, a, a stockpile and warehouse, as we all know, for calcium and phosphorus. Uh, calcium is important because not only does the nervous system require it to function properly, but also it's in high demand by the muscles of the body. Um, let's see, it also serves as a growth factors and hormone production reservoir. Uh, bones are required for our particular types of movements for muscle action. The muscles themselves use the bones as levers. Uh, also, the bones are used for support, supporting the body, as well as the soft organs within it. And finally, for protection. Uh, and, and when you think of protection, think of things like uh, the skull encasing the brain or uh, the, vertebra, the vertebra uh, encasing the spinal cord, uh, that sort of thing. The skeleton itself is, is divided into two main components. The first being the axial component and the second being the appendicular. The axial component is everything that's along the axis of the body and the appendicular component of the skeleton is all of the appendages. So let's take a look at who is who. So we would include in the axial, uh, obviously let's see the skull, the vertebral column, and uh, also the rib cage. Uh, the auditory ossicles are included because of this guy right here, really, the skull. So not only are they physically located on the skull, but they are derived from the same structures that give us our jaw as well as our hyoid. Oh, that's right. And our hyoid bone is considered part of the axial skeleton as well. Members of the appendicular or the appendage component include anything that's going to make up the arms, say here the humerus, the upper arm, or the femur, this is the lower leg bone, uh, any of the hands and feet as well, and uh, this one's often tricky, but the both the pelvic and the shoulder girdle, right? So those are all going to be the components here of the appendicular skeleton. The next way we classify bone is simply based on the shape of the bone. Uh, because all bones, as you can tell already, are shaped a little bit differently from each other. But they can still be grouped into four main categories. Those categories are the flat bones, the irregular bones, the long bones, and the short bones. Some folks actually classify the sesamoid bones into their own or fifth category. Uh, but for this lesson, we're just going to group it in with the short bones. Examples of the flat bone include uh, members from the skull or the rib cage, uh, the sternum and manubrium itself. So these are bones that are thin or they're simply flat. Uh, some have a slight curve to them. So just as you could see here. The irregular bones include the vertebrae and the hip bones. Here, so these are bones that just they, they have a, a usually complexity about them. They cannot be classified by any means into the other categories. So um, they usually have uh, unique shapes, uh, unique extensions. The next group are the long bones. So these are any of the bones that you can uh, classify as being simply longer then they are wide. So it's pretty easy, but those, those are considered to be the long bones themselves. And finally, the short bones, uh, which is going in this case to include the sesamoid bones. Uh, short bones are going to be, um, especially any of the carpal bones, right? So they're uh, kind of small, cube-shaped almost. Uh, also, we have here 
an example of a sesamoid bone. So this is the patella. And uh, these particular bones here develop usually within tendons. Um, and they, they come together over development or ossify. So this is an example of one you'd find in the knee, but you can also find these in between the sutures of some, some skulls. So I've been Elisa explaining to you a little bit about osteology. I hope you feel uh, introduced and oriented. Today we looked at the skeleton. We talked a little bit about cartilage and bone. We looked at the types of cartilage uh, and how cartilage grows. We looked at the major divisions of the skeleton, the rows of bone, and we also classified bones by shape.